you. Father God, we thank you this morning just for this privilege and opportunity to come and to study the Word of God with your people. We thank you, Father God, for the Spirit of God being here to give us insight and revelation of this Word. Mm -hmm. We pray, Father God, that even as we delve into the Word, that our hearts are, are open and receptive to receive, that our ears are sharp and willing to hear, and that even as we purpose to put the Word of God into practice, we declare that our lives shall never be the same again. We thank you for this privilege and this opportunity just to come and hear from heaven. And we praise you, Father God, for it. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're starting a new series this morning. I want you to turn with me to Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18. And uh, we're going to start at verse number 13. And we'll probably read down. We'll read down probably 22, 23. Exodus chapter 18, verse thir starting at verse number 13. And here's what it said. I'm reading this from the uh, God's Word translation. It says, The next day Moses was set in disagreement among the people. The people stood around Moses from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw everything Moses was doing for the people, he asked, why are you doing this for the people? Why do you sit here alone while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Mm -hmm. Moses answered his father-in-law, because the people come to me to find out God's will. Whenever they have a disagreement and bring it to me, I decide which person is right, and I tell them God's law and his laws and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, what, what you're doing is not good. You and your people will wear yourselves out. This is too much work for you. You can't do it alone. Now listen to me and I'll give you some advice. May God be with you. You must be the people's representative to God and bring their disagreements to him. So notice what he gives them some instruction. This is what your assignment is, Moses. You're supposed to be going to God on behalf of the people, not dealing with all these little mighty issues Amen. that are coming up. Amen. He says, sir, he says, you must instruct them he said, you must instruct them in the laws and the teachings, show them how to live, and tell them what to do. He said, but choose capable men from, from all the people, men who fear God, men who you can trust, men who hate corruption. Put them in charge of groups of thousand or hundred or fifty or ten people. Let them be the ones who, who, usually, who usually settle disagreements among the people. They should bring all important cases to you but they should settle all minor cases themselves. Make it easier for yourself by letting, letting them help you. All right. And then what he said in verse 23, he said, if God commands you and you do this, you will be able to continue your work, and all these people will have their disagreements settled so that they can go home. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that really wonderful? But, but so here's what I'm going to share with you and what we're going to deal with in this, in this series. The cost of leadership. The cost of leadership. Now, all of us are leaders in some, in some capacity. All of us. Every last one of us. Every believer sitting, you are a leader in some capacity in your life. Uh, there, are le there are levels of leadership. And how you serve in your current level of leadership will determine whether or not you're promoted or demoted by man and by God. Now, there are four things leadership will, will require of you. Number one, it will require your time. If anybody ever been a manager, Lord knows it requires your time. <laughs> folk don't show up, you gotta fill in. You know, you can't shut the business down because folk don't show up. You just gotta keep rolling. <laughs> you might be doing, doing be the one doing the rolling, but you you business keeps moving. So you gotta invest your time. Number two, you're gonna have to you're gonna have it's gonna require your attention as a leader. Number three, it's going to require more responsibility on your part. And number four, it's going to require you to be more accountable. And there's more accountability in, the, in, in being a leader. Well, those, those are four things that, that leadership will require of you. Your time, your attention, your responsibility, and your accountability. Uh, now, there are three categories of leadership or three areas of leadership that we all kind of have to deal with in our day-to-day -day life. Number one, uh, your family. Amen. 
If you have a family, your mother, father, there are leadership roles you have to play within that family. Number two, the ministry. Now, the ministry has responsibilities. You know, stuff don't just happen. Number three, uh, the third area, category, is your job. You know, and so, you know, now I'm just going to, I'm going to do uh, just an overview of this today. I'm not going to, you know, start in great detail, but I'm just kind of going to give us this overview of what I'm going to be going over for the next, you know, however long we need to go. Uh, but, but the thing that I really want to kind of bring home to each of us is that, that all of us are going to have to sacrifice something for any leadership role. I don't care who you are. I don't care how, how small you think your role is. Everything we do requires some sacrifice on our part. But let me say this. A sacrifice is not a bad thing when you are sacrificing for the Lord. He always pays. And he pays well. Has anybody, has anybody in here uh, had the pleasure of God taking care of you? Amen. Hasn't it been good? It's been wonderful, Amen. hasn't it? And, and he didn't do necessarily everything you necessarily deserved. Amen. Amen. He did because he loved you. Amen. It is, it's, the Bible says we, we love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. So that means that he, his love becomes the example to me for how I am to love him and to love others. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so in, in leadership, in, in leadership roles in your life, be it your family, be it, your, be it the ministry, be it, your, be it your job, how you function within those levels of leadership should be determined by you understanding the manifestation of God's love for you. Very, and see, that there, remember those four things that's going to require time, attention, responsibility, and accountability. Amen. How many of you know that on job, one of the, the, the one of the things people don't like doing is being accountable? Amen. They do not like being, they, they do, I'm not a child. Yeah, but you're still late. <laughs> you got nothing to do with it. You're late. Amen. Well, I'm only 10 minutes late. Why are you making a big deal? It's just 10 minutes. You take 10 minutes, add that up every day for the rest of the year, and see how much that costs the company. Amen. It's a lot of money. Amen. Amen. It is. It's a whole lot. I did the math one time. It's a lot of money. Amen. What five minutes here and ten minutes there, that ten minute extra on lunch, that ten minute coming in late, that ten minutes leaving nerve. And you add that up for a year in terms of hours not work that you're supposed to be working, and look at how much money it would have been. It's, it's huge. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of free checks in there Amen. in that time frame. Right? And so, you know, so there's a cost to you being a leader. You know, now, listen, a lot, many people want the mantle of leadership without the responsibility of leadership. Yeah. Everybody, everybody likes to be in control, don't they? Ooh, yeah. They like to brag about their position, but at the same time, to be in that position, mm -hmm. it, it, there's some responsibility that go along with that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's no, you know what, I'm going to tell you something, being a leader isn't always necessarily the fun stuff in life because you have to tell people stuff they don't want to hear. Just being, a, just being, I mean, just in a normal work environment, if you're a manager and you're leading people and people coming in late, you got to check them. Mm -hmm. Or, or call it in, talking about their grandmama died, and this, this is like the third time grandmama died in the last two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, grandma said, man, grandma died all the time. She's getting resurrected. Mm -hmm. And you get this stuff from people, and you got to confront it. Amen. You know, it's not comfortable going in there someone that's going to say, my grandmama died. You, and you know, you know it's the third time grandmama's died? And you pull them in the office and say, you know, I know, you know, you said your grandma died, but your grandma died last year. Your grandma died that year before, year before that. How many grandmamas you got? <laughs> you got to check them on it. I don't care if they get insulted. I need to know what's going on with you. <laughs> Amen. And that's not comfortable for people. Because people don't like that level of, comfort, of uh, accountability because they perceive that, well, I'm an adult. But you're not acting like an adult because an adult is one who's responsible. Amen. 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 It's not just because you're, you, you have a four and a, two, four and a two in your age. It's because you are responsible. Mm -hmm. Come on, hey man, it's not the 40-year-old man who's living on his mom and them couch, man, just hanging out, you're not working. All right. Complain because his mom still won't give him an allowance. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not, you're not an adult. You may have a physically adult body, but mentality-wise, you have a child's mind. Yep. And so, so many people want the mantle of leadership without the responsibility of leadership. Now this leadership is not about doing the things you like, but it is seen in how you handle the things you don't like. You don't like, and you do them with excellence. Mm. <laughs> it's easy to do the things we like. All right. I mean, for instance, preaching is the easiest thing in the world for me. 
I could roll, listen, I could roll out of bed in the morning and start preaching. Mm -hmm. Easy. Like someone said, easy like Sunday morning. Just this easy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's my gifting. Amen. And so thank God that God put me in a position where I can use my gifting, but apart from that gifting, there's a whole lot of other stuff that got to be done besides mm -hmm. my gifting. <laughs> Say that. You gotta rally people, like, man. You ever try to rally people? Don't want to be rallied someday. <laughs> and you know they tired. We like, but we got we got one more thing we gotta do. We got one more thing. I need you to come in on Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody been there with people? If, if you ever led people, have to tell them. I mean, how about having to tell them to stay over, stay over from work for an extra thirty minutes because you have a meeting with them. <laughs> I already put in my eight eight hours. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> See, but we make those sacrifices for the job, don't we? Amen. Ooh, glory! This is good. This is gonna be so good. This is gonna be such a wonderful series, man. I'm gonna give me back some chandeliers and hang them from the ceiling so y'all can swing from them. That's how good it's gonna be. Because really, the, the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is. The Bible talks about in the last day, many departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of the devil. And God said that, had he not been willing to cut that time short, he said, even the very elect of God will be deceived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what the elect are? It's the leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if I'm going to be a leader, I want to be a leader in the kingdom of God who will not defect. And defecting is, defecting is not just this instant thing people do. It's a, little, it's a gradual thing. A little bit here and a little bit there. A little dis, not being accountable here and not being accountable there. And it, it just, it's just a little bit at a time. To eventually you convince yourself that what you're doing is okay. Have you ever seen people come in and work late? And, and they come in late for so long that and people let it go to where they feel like they have the right to be late? I work with people, when I was a manager, I, I had situations where this girl would come in late and nobody, would, and she'd come in with an attitude, be sitting on her desk with a foot, foot propped up on her phone, just chilling. And I'm like, hold up. And so, but the problem was, she went through three other managers who never checked her. So now I got to become the bad guy. I'm the trying to control everybody guy. Now, no, you, you, you're breaking the rules. And just because previous people did not check you, don't mean I'm supposed to not check you just because they let it go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I have my own personal integrity to deal with. Amen. Because if you're working under me, you reflect me. Amen. If I let you do what you want to do, then guess what? The person that come in and they sit with you, they go think they can do the same thing you do. Mm -hmm. So I got to check you. Well, she didn't like me checking her. Every time I checked her, she run back to my man. He had hair, man. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, my boss like, well, you know, were you on your cell phone? Well, you can't be on your cell phone. Well, I've been doing no. See, that's the problem. You've been doing it and nobody checked. So in other words, somebody was in, in the, had the mantle of leadership, but they did not operate by the leadership mantle that they had. They, they too busy trying to be people's buddy. <laughs> Come on, hey man, you can't be everybody's, in, in ministry, you can't be everybody's buddy. Amen. Cut people lose respect for you. Let me, let me tell you something. The people, the people, the people you spend a lot of time just hanging out with and joking with and stuff and laughing with and you know chilling with them all the time in, in ministry. Let me tell you, what's eventually going to happen? Something's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And the minute you try to check them, mm -hmm. they gonna get mad at you. Mm -hmm. They gonna get mad at you because they became familiar with you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There's a, there's a price to pay for leadership. There's, there's, there's an isolation you get with, that comes with leadership. That's true. That's true. It does. Okay? You just, it, it, it comes with... Every, see, if you want those person that got to be good with everybody, friends with everybody, you can't be no leader. Because real leaders stand alone. <laughs> they have to at times. And if you're not standing alone, you have to be willing to stand alone. Because the folk with you today might not be with you today, tomorrow. And so in leadership, it, it costs something to wear the mantle of a leader. Can't take them all out to lunch all the time. Come on, hey man. Why? Because they lose respect for your mantle. They lose respect for your leadership. And, and you know, and I, and I had to, I had to learn that because I was because I'm a very I'm very much a people person. I like people. I mean, I'm just all I'm like you know, get me in a group of people. I like talking to people. I can't find that network. But, 
But I had, to, I had to learn how to pull myself back in from that so that I don't lose the authority that God has given me in that position. Like right now, on this job that I have now, everybody call me Mr. Donald. I don't even know why they call, they don't call them as Mr. Donald. There are people older than me that work there, they don't call them Mr. Donald. They don't call them Mr. Anything, they, they just call them you know, by their name. Hey Jerry, hey you know, Larry, hey you know, Bob. But I'm Mr. Donald. I don't even know where they got it from. So, so I mean really, I mean I don't, I mean because they didn't know I was a pastor. Didn't tell them. So I'm getting called Mr. Donald. And so one of the girls called me, hey, Mr. Donald, so, so, I'm, and, I, and I said, uh, I said, you don't have to call me Mr. Donald. Donald's fine. And then the Holy Ghost checked me. He said, no, 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 no. He said, you need to keep that separation there. Because I put that there. So I was telling Greg, I said, man, I see people call me Mr. Donald. He said, do this to mantle on your life. It's just, it's just the, they, not, they don't see you, they see the mantle that God has given you, and it requires respect. Say Even that. if they don't necessarily understand say it, that. he said that mantle that you wear requires a level of respect to it. He said, don't dismiss that and don't try to be friendly with it because there's a reason why God's put that there. Mm -hmm. And I see why God put it there because when he put it there, then he opened the door for me to minister to people. Mm -hmm. And they took me seriously. Because I wasn't all up in there and they, and they mm. going out to lunch with them, sitting in their car, Say listening that. to their music, Say jamming, that. bam, boom, you know. Right. I was very off to my side, set up by myself, doing my job. But because I didn't compromise uh, my leadership position that God gave, not, not one that I made, but one God gave me. Mm. That I didn't try to make. But he gave it to me for a reason. And if you're a leader, today, there is a reason why God made, has you in a position of being a leader. If you're a father, you're a father for a reason. That's a mantle that you have to wear. And going to tell you something, your children learn how to lead by watching you. Because here's what I learned in the Bible, that every great leader started out a great servant. And all of them was extremely accountable to the king. Amen. Amen. David was accountable to Saul, even when Saul was trying to kill him. Accountable. And the, and the men I saw who were in, who was in a position to become leaders... And, and they did not maintain their connection to their leader, they lost that mantle. They lost the opportunity. I mean, Elijah had a servant before Elisha. And when Elijah started running from Jezebel because she threatened his life, then Elijah told his servant, now you wait down here in this city, and I'm going to go on over here and over here and do whatever. And the Bible says he left that servant in that city. And then Elijah went up to the mountain and was telling God, I'm all alone. I ain't nobody here. I'm the only one that haven't bowed the knee to bail. Huh? God said, I got 7,000 men that haven't bowed the knee to bail, dude. What you talking about? Mm -hmm. But then he said, look, he said, I'll tell you what, I got somebody. This one, I said, I got somebody. Go down here to this, and you're going to find a dude down there, and, and that, I want you to get it. Name Elisha. He went and found Elisha. Elisha was out there plowing in the field, working the tent in the ground, doing his job. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Elijah, Elijah came upon him, threw his mantle on him. Uh -huh. Elisha, Eli, yeah, Elisha went, made sacrifice, went home, said, I'm out of here, and left. And so we find that, he, that Elijah never returned to get the servant he left in the city. Now listen to this. It's because it was not Elijah's responsibility to keep the servant with them. It was the servant's responsibility to commit himself to stay with Elijah. Amen. Amen. See, that's why pastors can't be chasing people. Say that. Say that. No, y'all supposed to chase after us. What did Paul say? Follow me as I follow the Lord. It's, it's not supposed to work. And yet we have raised up a generation that want to be pursued. When in fact they're supposed to be the, being the pursuers. That they're to pursue us as gifts to the body, and as we pursue God, they get all the blessings that come out of our lives. Amen. Amen. But it's not like that today, because people got choices. Mm. And I think as leaders, and remember what I was talking about, was talking about earlier, earlier in the month about how we cater to people. Well, leaders, we're not called to cater to you. What Moses was doing with these people, he was catering to them. And, and, and his following on to that is not a good idea. You cannot cater to these people like this. You've got to get back in your position. You should be going before the Lord on their behalf, not them bringing all these issues, issues to Amen. you. Amen. 
And he knows something because it's easy to do that when you're, you know, friendly with people. And you want to be liked by people. How I many you know as a lead, as a as a as a manager on a job, if you're a really good manager, you're probably not gonna be really liked a whole whole lot. Come on. Come on. Because you're not gonna be in you're not gonna be in the in crowd. And it doesn't mean you're mean, it doesn't mean you're disrespectful, but people just don't like anybody telling them what to do. And so what do we do? Sometimes when we have you ever got have you ever got if you're a, have you ever been a manager, have you ever got a, a your, your upper manager would give you some instruction to give to your people. And you didn't necessarily like it. And you had the responsibility of going back and telling your people what your upper management told you to tell them. And you go in there and tell your people. But when you present it to them, you present it to them in such a way that it's to give the appearance that you really agree with them. You might have seen anything like that happen. If you weren't in that position but you had managers that did that, the first thing you thought, oh, she down. He down with us. Mm -hmm. He understand. I, I struggle. But he just all out of order. Because he stopped pursuing his upper management. Because it, listen, it's not about what you like as a leader. And this is the problem with people. They want to follow you as long as they like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they, as long as you talk to them really nice. But don't get firm with them. But you get to be real nice. They, they, good. they good with you. But when you got to get firm with them, when correction comes. See, here's, the, here's how you know a leader. You always know a, a real leader when correction comes and how they handle correction. Because if, if, if they don't handle correction, then listen to this. It, it, even if they don't get offended, if they don't change. Yeah. What, what, listen, when they don't change, what they say is that they don't respect you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Come on, somebody smile at me real big. Smile, smile at me. <laughs> Isn't that true? Anybody, anybody who's a manager? How many managers I got up in this house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. have you had situations like that? It's not fun, is it? And you don't like being the bad guy, but you got to be the bad guy for their good. Even when you're doing it for their good, and they don't even appreciate the good that you're trying to do, because you're trying to help them keep their job. Because you know they got, to, they, got to, they got to feed those kids they got at home. And you're trying to give them a chance to help and they don't want to listen. They, you don't respect If I tell you, look, you need to be here at so-and-so, so-and-so time, don't give me an excuse. Because if you agreed to put yourself in that position under me to serve me, don't tell me what you can and cannot do. Oh, man. Oh, Lord. Well, I ain't getting paid. You aren't getting paid. God pays you for your obedience. <laughs> See? No, it costs something. I remember when I was in Faith is the Victory and, and, and you know and I was had a, I had the privilege of being in a lot of different positions and serving. But my attitude was always, whatever you tell me to do, I will do. I'm not here to question you. I'm, I put I made a decision to put myself under you. I am not here to question what you tell me to do. I will do whatever you tell me to, as long as it doesn't violate the word. Well, you know, what they ask you to be at the church at two hours early, I'll be there. Because I made the decision to put myself under that person. And if I don't like it, then I can go somewhere else. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, though? And that's just how it is. <clears throat> that's, 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 because as a leader, you can't just, <clears throat> as a leader, you cannot cater to everybody's individual desires. You won't get nothing done. Okay, now you don't like coming. You don't like coming in early. Okay, I tell you, you can come in at eight. Uh, uh, you don't like. You don't like being here long. Okay, you can leave at two. You start doing that craziness. You gonna be. You gonna have people all all upset in, in the air. You gotta stick with a. You gotta stick with a standard. <laughs> you did that good. You gotta stick with a standard. You gotta stick with a standard. And listen, and expect people as a leader to to rise to the standard. All right. Have you noticed every time you lower the standards, for all folk do is get worse. <laughs> I can't, I can't be here at 7. Well, we can, I can hear 8. Okay, 8. We'll change. Okay, you come in at 8. Now they show up at 8, 10, 8, 15. I thought you said you could be here at 8. Well, I overslept. Hold up. When you needed to be here at 7, you were getting here at 7.30. <laughs> now we move it to 8, you're getting here at 8, 15. If you keep changing, they'll, they'll lose respect for you. Mm -hmm. Listen to this, folks. <laughs> 
leaders are not called leaders are not called to accommodate you. You are called to accommodate them. That's why they're leaders. Mm -hmm. The general listen when you when you go to war, <laughs> when you go to war, the, the, the general does not stand out there and say, okay, who want to go fight today? Anybody want to go fight? You don't, you don't want okay, you want to go. You don't like fight? Okay, no, nah, yes, you don't, nah, you don't do that. He says, no, I'm charge. <laughs> you say, well, I don't like that order. Well, you should have joined the military. <laughs> right? Right. There are instructions. It, it doesn't change. You know, and I, I don't know about you, but don't you like being served well? Amen. I mean, when you go to a restaurant, don't you want your waiter to wait on you really well? You want them to give you excellent service? But when they give you excellent service, you are always wanting to reward them. But, but if he's giving you lousy service, you don't have to take the lousy, you're not going to take the lousy service. Why? Because you're not there to, to, to serve him. He's there to serve you. And since he's there to serve you, there are some things, specific things that you want. If you want, you want water with lemon, he can't bring you water with iced tea. Come on, amen? Why? Because he's there to serve you. See, whenever you, whenever you are in a position, and this is a, there is a hierarchy to things. Why do people don't understand? There is a hierarchy to things. And when in the hierarchy, at this level, it serves this level. And this level serves this level. And this level serves that level. It, 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 it is always up. I remember watching uh, Saving Private Ryan. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. And they were talking to Tom. And the guys on the, on the, on the, on the, who were with Tom Hanks, they were all back there behind them complaining. They were just griping about stuff, and being in this war, and being shot at. And, why we don't have no backup? Why come they can't fly us in, try to fly some help? I mean, they were making all these complaints. And they said, hey, Sarge. He says, why come you don't, don't, don't you have any complaints? And I remember what he said. He says, he says, he says something. He says, son, I only complain up. That's a good point. I only complain up. Why? Because complaining, you don't fix nothing. It just makes everybody more disgruntled. See, that when you got to complain where ministry is concerned, never complain on the same level you want. Complain us. Amen. Where something can be done about it if it needs to be changed. Or at least get an understanding. Mm -hmm. see, that's the make, see, that's the making of a leader right there. When somebody understands how to handle situations, you're making yourself into that leader. Because, because listen, the, the, the greatest leaders are the greatest servants. Always. It, it, it always works that way. You know, it's like, it's like the family structure. It's men who want to who want to be fathers, but they don't want to be dads. Excuse me. They want to be fathers, but they don't want to be daddies. Mm -hmm. Now, going up and down the block, telling everybody who, who he got that child. He got a child, and got child. But he ain't taking care of none of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, got, got $100,000 in back child support, because you don't want to pay. So now you're off the grid, and you hide. Mm -hmm. But you want to claim all those kids, you, you, they're they your kids. You're not a very good leader, because then, then what is the model you're giving to those children? That if you're a daddy, you don't know about taking care of your kids. Just keep on doing what you've done. Just be, live your way. In that model. But if he really wants the respect of his children, he has to stay there and raise his children. Amen. All right, man. Amen. And guess what? It's sacrificial. Come on, bro. What are you telling me? So I sacrifice all this. Lots, lots of sleepless nights. <laughs> lots of dirty diapers to change. Come on, see a leader. See a, a man when he's a leader in his home, he don't just leave the diaper changing to his wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wow. women's work. Oh, now it's women's work. <laughs> Wouldn't women's work when you were making them? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, 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 so if he's going to lead in his home, he has to lead by his example. He always exemplifies it. Why? So that his children will learn how to... Listen, your children learn how to serve by watching you serve. Amen. They do. They learn, they learn how to serve by watching how you serve. They learn about accountability, not by what you say, but by what you do. Mm. Amen. You know, I mean, with John, I mean, like, with my son, I, I always try to make sure that if I can't do something and I'm doing it for somebody else, I always let him know, try to have him in on that so he can hear me saying, you know, I wouldn't even get this done or whatever, so that he can understand that there, I can't just ignore it. Mm -hmm. I've got to be responsible enough to at least call a person and say there's a delay mm -hmm. and explain my reasons why. Mm -hmm. Listen, leaders, leaders communicate. All right. Let me tell you some, some, some real 
some 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 bad communication skills. All right, let me go through them. Y'all ready? I'm breathing deep. Don't text. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why. Because text is an indication of your fear to to, to confront something face to face. Mm -hmm. Don't text. I mean, I mean, if you're a manager, you want your people texting you saying I'm not gonna come in. No, you gonna call me. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Because I can tell when you're lying. <laughs> Isn't that true? When you people talk, when people talk, you can tell when they're lying. Amen. And then text is very text is very it's very subjective. Mm -hmm. For instance, I can send a text that says, Where are you? Now the person receiving the text is going to interpret that text based on how they feel. So if they're frustrated and I'm asking them, where are you? They go see me. Well, you ain't my mom. I'm trying to keep up with me for. When I'm asking, I'm asking because I'm concerned about you. And you don't get all that in text. And in any leadership position, you don't want people texting you telling you they ain't coming in. At least you shouldn't, because people hide behind texting. Say that. It's an easy. It's an easy way to not confront. One of the things I didn't do as managers when people. Because, you know, you know, we had a day and night shift, and one of the things that I, that I did not allow people to do was write letters to each other when they were dealing with an issue. You know why? Because people write more aggressively, aggressively than they do when they're face-to-face -face with you. People say things in letters they would never say face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They do. People are aggressive when they write. They just, they just write feeling good, putting it on out there, dying those eyes, I and mean, they be writing, boy. <laughs> You know, and then, you know, and I go like, because I, 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 I had one person and they were like, you know, they had problems with their cubicle partners because they were doing one thing and they didn't like what they were doing. And, 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 I, and I was walking by and I saw the letter on the computer to the cubicle and I read it. Because I'm like, I want that man here for him to fight. I'm glad I read it because I'm telling you, it, it was so aggressive that the person who would have got it would have been offended. So I, I, I told her, I said, hold up, you can't leave this. You go, I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stay about 30 extra minutes. You can leave 30 extra minutes early tomorrow. I said, but I want you to stay there and you, I want you to talk to the person mm -hmm. and have a face-to-face. -face. I said, because I'm telling you, there, there's a misunderstanding here. And if you talk to them, you'll, you, I guarantee you guys can get an understanding. So she did. She stayed. Now, mind you, I'm sitting here listening to this conversation. And I'm telling you, that conversation didn't go nothing like the way she wrote that letter. Mm -hmm. At all. In fact, it was like a 180. Sweet as all get out. <laughs> It was just soaked with honey. You're so sweet. Just nice. But had she just been left to write it, then leave that letter, it would have caused more confusion. Mm -hmm. And more anger, more hurt. That's why you, when you deal with stuff, when you're dealing with, when you're working under somebody, you need to really have conversations with them. Because they keep misunderstanding. Because people, because I'm telling you, people misinterpret things a whole lot of times based on what they're feeling and what they're going through. Say that. Say that. You know, you might text and say, you know, I'm not going to be there. And, and they might be thinking, they don't, they don't like me. They mad at me. Because they may have had a bad day where somebody just chewed them out. And they might be feeling a little less than. So that anything that falls apart affects their feelings. That's why it's good to talk. That makes sense? Yes. You got to talk. Not only should you talk, but don't let people text you and, and, and stuff like that. Anything that's corrective, anything that's corrective need to be, have, you need to have a verbal conversation with people. Anytime, listen, anytime you cannot fulfill your commitment, you need to have a, ver a, a verbal conversation with them. Amen. See, people can understand when you sometimes things come up. They understand that. I understand that. But at least have the verbal, because if, if you don't have the verbal, it looks like folk hiding from you. Yeah, man. Don't feel like they're hiding. Like I gotta hunt. Why I gotta hunt you down? Why I gotta text you and tell you to call me? If it, you, it makes you feel like it, it makes, it, and then what it does is it makes you seem irresponsible. So no text. No text. It's better. It's better to call and leave a message Amen. than to text. I'm saying it is. Just just leave a verb. This is, you cannot just be excellent in your gifting, which usually comes easy, but then neglect the weightier things like faithfulness, accountability, and diligence. It's easy to do our giftings, y'all, isn't it? It's so easy. Whatever your gifting is, it's easy to work in that thing. But, but it's, it's, it's not the gifting. 
that keeps you. It's the character that keeps you. You know, I, the, the saying is, your gift will take you where only your character can keep you. Many people rise high because of their gifting, but they have no character. And when they get there, they mess the thing up. Amen. <laughs> mess Amen. it up royally. Listen, folks, that's why I, the one thing I'm learning as a leader is I, I, am, I am learning to just appreciate right where we are as a ministry. Amen. Because I can, in my mind, say, oh, I think I'm ready. No, I'm like, you know what, you know me better than I do. I trust you. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm going to enjoy this journey. And right where I'm at, I'm going to have a good time doing what I'm doing. And not get sidetracked. All right. But see, now this is, if I panic, I sow that seed of panic into you. If I am fearful, I sow that same spirit of fear into you. Say that. If I'm untrusting, distrusting, or don't trust, I'm going to sow that same distrust into you. So that as a leader, i got to follow the one that is leading me, which is Christ. Amen. So that as you follow me and I'm following the Lord, then we'll all be in his peace. Whew, praise the Lord. Come on, amen. Is that good? Because that's what it's about. It's all, at the end of the day, it's all about following him and doing what he says. Praise the Lord. All right, so I'm going to get to some deeper things later on. Uh, I'm going to stop right there. So this is kind of my intro. So we're going to deal with those. The four things, leader will four things leadership will, will require of you. It, number one, it will require your time. Number two, it, it will require your attention. Number three, it will require, require your responsibility. And number four, it will require your accountability. And the three categories of leadership is family. First one is family. The second one is ministry. And the third one is your job. Because in those three years of your life, you need to be a leader. And you need to be an effective leader. And what I mean by effective, I'm not talking about comparing yourself to somebody else. I mean being the best that you can be right where you are doing what you do. Amen. 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 All right. So we'll stop Amen. there and uh, we'll, we'll pray and let you go. Oh, yeah, we'll pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the word. Lord. And I just pray that even as we go through this series, Lord, I pray that you will allow us to, to, to just even examine ourselves to make sure that, Father, we are being the effective leaders that you have called us to be in, in whatever area of, of life that we're, we're walking in right now. And, Lord, I just pray for your grace and your compassion, your mercy, that even as we go through this, we thank you for developing us, that we might be better for those that we lead. And so we praise you, Father God, for it, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen.